Greetings, fellow scribes! Welcome back to the Archive! This week I continue my series talking about the Trinity Continuum and Aeon by talking about Aeon. Aeon's in a kind of odd space in the whole history of the setting. You see, originally, Trinity was the first of the RPG the first book of what we now call the Trinity Continuum. But in the original run, it was the third chronologically, even though it was first published. The other two being Adventure, then Aberrant. Now, though, it is the fourth chronologically in the modern relaunch and redo of the whole setting. You still have Adventure, then you have Trinity Core, Aberrant, and finally Aeon. So, let's sit back, relax, and enjoy as we talk about Aeon. To really understand the year of 2123, we have to talk about how we got there. So let's start that. I'm going to try to go over this as more of a big overarching sweep of what happened, rather than do some big, well this happened in this year and this happened in this year type thing. There will be minor details left out, but the big things I'm going to talk about. So, starting in 2018, going to 2067. Yes, I know I just said I wasn't going to talk about dates. These are important. Was the Nova Age. This would actually be the setting period of the game Aberrant. This is when the beings with quantum powers would do things like clean up the environment, clean up oil spills, reverse global warming and climate change, all sorts of stuff like that. It was a golden age. You had Novas who were developing radical new technologies many of which are used way into the modern era. Things like hyperfusion reactors, the principles of the tech that would allow for lunar colonies, asteroid miners, and even keeping extrasolar colonies functional. And in fact, a few extrasolar colonies were founded thanks to Novas who could travel through space through various means. And then came the Aberrant War. For whatever reason, Novas started fighting more. Maybe it was the inherent corruption from quantum energies. Maybe it was something else. Either way, the Novas started fighting, and cities often ended up being the targets of their attacks. And then there's a series of events. Um, one Nova blew up in the heartland of the U.S., this left a massive blight uh, area of infertile soil, basically, through the breadbasket of America. And so the U.S. decided to invade Canada and Mexico for their farmlands. Yeah, that happened. But... Other things basically kept the tensions escalating and escalating until China 
took control of all the orbitally based nuclear weapons around the planet and pointed them at Earth and delivered a nice simple ultimatum. Every Nova here, leave or we're gonna glass the planet. And so the Novas left. And humanity was dealing with the aftermath. Among things that happened was people started leaving the cities with a maker, a hyperfusion reactor, and some solar panels. They could have everything they needed, even food, if they didn't mind dealing with a maker-made nutrient paste. But Another thing that happened was much technology created by the Novas began to be regulated. And Japan sealed itself off again. That's kind of par for the course. A revised opnet was built because during the Aberrant War, a, no a Nova essentially caused a massive opnet crash. The opnet, by the way, is, imagine if you will, the internet, but everywhere, where augmented reality is a instrumental part of your day-to-day -day life. And losing that, basically, you lose all your information. including your credit cards, your bank statements, everything. And that was a big deal. So the rebuilt OpNet focused on redundancy and making itself not being able to be collapsed again. And, you know, humanity for the most part continued on. Then, one day, some of the blights around the world start shrinking. Some disappear, some of the larger ones shrink noticeably. At the same time, a bunch of aberrants show up and destroy an asteroid colony. The next year, aberrants attack Sydney, Australia. And something new meets them. These new individuals teleport or focus light into laser beams, or use telekinesis to smash aberrants, or set them on fire, or freeze them, or a whole range of other things. And these beings are scions. And they beat back, and they repel the aberrants. And following this great battle, uh, the one of the leaders of the aberrants steps forward. He runs a company called Orgotech, and he reveals that there's been work done using off-the-shelf sort of technology developed by leading minds to find those who have specific talents and activate these recessive genes, these recessive abilities. And these are the scions. And there are eight 
basic chunks of abilities. I'll go into that later. But that was sort of an issue. Now, one of the groups, the Chitrabanu, used uh, quantum kinetics. They manipulated stuff at the quantum level. And they were pr the primary group responsible for learning how to diminish blights. They were also trying to find ways to cure or mitigate the effects of corruption on aberrants. And the other Psy Orders decided to do an investigation on them. So the inspection turned into all the Chitrabanu were summoned. And a inspection turned into a massive fight. And the fight ended with a massive explosion. That, for all intents and purposes, people believe killed the head of the Chitrabanu, destroyed the Prometheus Chamber, and destroyed many other of this order. Now, there are some quantum kinetics out there who were converted by the quant by the Prometheus Chamber who weren't part of the Chitrabanu. So, uh, they are essentially mercenary scions. But there's not been a new Chitrabanu since this event, or new quantum kinetics since this event. So the few out there that are, are getting progressively rarer. But time goes on, and another Psy Order took a time to exile itself from Earth. The Upeo Wamacho were the teleporter order. And they felt that the other orders were basically using them as human ferrymen. And they kind of resented this. So they exiled themselves. They went away from Earth for a time. And they did do some stuff out in the extrasolar colonies. Karoo Station gets attacked by a alien species called Chromatics. We'll come to them in a bit. But before the Opeawama show disappear, a Chinese based ship and its teleporter find an alien ship and get directed to a another planet that they call Kinshu and the aliens there kin and these aliens don't look anything like humans and typically interact with us in a humanoid bio suit Humanoid-shaped biosuit. They are masters of biotech, but they won't tell people how they do it. They won't tell humanity how they do it. But they end up establishing a embassy on Luna, and then, of course, you have the attack on Karoo Station by the Chromatics. 
and the Upeawa Macho have, by this point, exiled themselves from Earth. The development by humans in the form of Orgotech and the biotech order Norca and Kin on Earth, oh sorry, on Luna, develop a ship that is capable of duplicating the tel the interstellar teleportation of the Upeo Amacho, the Leviathan class starships. And with these, humanity gets back out into the stars. And at this point, the Upeo Wamacho come back. And you get to just under a year ago, where humanity encounters its third group of aliens. A group that calls itself the Coalition. And this one basically ends up the first encounter. They send delegates over and what was going as a perfectly peaceful negotiation ended up becoming a vicious battle. And the Coalition's emissaries convinced humanity that it was a an error, that the humans had said something accidentally that triggered the warrior cast of the Coalition's defensive protocols, and discussions resumed again. And, and during this, one of the biokinetics realizes that the emissaries are manipulating the humans via pheromones. And so the humans switch to filtered breathing masks. And once they do that, they're able to conduct negotiations, retreat, do analysis, and they determine that somewhere to the aft of the ship is something showing quantum contamination. They don't know if it's something with the kin themselves, sorry, with the coalition themselves, or what. They just know they need to get out of there, but their drive doesn't activate. And so they end up trying to flee via reaction thrusters. And Beyond that, we do not know what happened. Now, the chromatics are an interesting case, going back to them, because they attacked Earth. And this time, chromatics were taken alive, and a number of their ships were taken. And what happens is interrogation is conducted and the chromatics hate humanity because they believe us to be horrific murderous monsters their ships are all based strangely enough on older human ships and they just have some bits of chromatic technology added to them, but the chromatics don't know how to maintain the technology on the ships. And then they find that the ships have drugged and suppressed teleporters kept in the heart of them to teleport the ships around. And it's this revelation that will eventually bring the Upeawa Macho back to Earth. 
and it's now believed that the 90 missing teleporters that was part of the reason why the Yopeo Wamacho were fearing a Chitrabanu type purge on their order and that was why the Chitrabanu left in the first place and it's believed now that these 90 tele missing teleporters were captured and drugged by the chromatics but this brings us up to the present year so now let's take a little bit of time to talk about the different Psy Orders. So there were eight Scion Orders. Of course, with the destruction of the Chitrabanu, there became only seven. I'm going to talk about the extant orders at the time of 2123. The Escopian Order. These people dealt with Vita Kinetics. What are Vita Kinetics? Well, essentially, Vita Kinetics are. I can heal you. I, by making your body reading itself back together. I can harm you by doing the reverse. Of making yourself, but making your body knit itself together. I can strengthen my muscles to do bigger feats, lift heavier things, take blows that would normally hurt me, etc., etc. That's what vitakinesis is. Straight up, it's self. It's buffs for yourself or others, and it's healing and harming. Isra is uh, I S R A. They deal with clairsentience, knowing what's going to happen ahead of time. Knowing what's going somewhere else. Hearing stuff. That sort of stuff. That's what they did. They kind of use it as a form of predicting the future. Originally. You know, knowing what the enemy's going to do. Knowing where things are. Spying. That sort of thing. Then you have the legions. These are psychokinetics. Now, psychokinetics in this case involves three key things. Moving things with your mind. You know, straight up standard telekinesis. Pyrokinesis, which is Agitating stuff on the molecular level and making it burst into flames in various ways. And cryokinesis, which is stopping the movement of molecules to make things freeze and make things cold. Because that's how heat and cold actually work, they're the agitation of molecules. The Ministry, which are, interestingly, based out of China, are the telepaths. And, yes, they use telepathy for everything you would expect a good surveillance state to do. Within reason, of course. But they also have the offensive uses of telepathy that they use on aberrants, and they have the ability to coordinate a group of scions via telepathic links. That sort of thing. Essentially, if you see, have ever seen Young Justice, they 
do the stuff Miss Martian would do telepathically. Norca are about biokinesis. This is not vitakinesis. This is different. Biokinesis is basically reshaping your body. Oh, I, I want my heart to be about three inches to the left type thing. Or, uh, you know what? I need my arm about six inches longer to reach that. Eee! Got it. Or, you know what? Having bat wings would probably really make this easy right now. And that's pretty much what biokinesis is. The basic reshaping of your body to do stuff. Orgotech. Make lots of technology. These people are the electrokinetics. Electrokinesis is kind of weird. On one hand, they can manipulate the electric flow around people. Allowing them to directly interface with technology. They can control technology via their electrokinesis, but they also can manipulate light so that they can do things like focus, focus a candle into a laser beam. That sort of thing. Finally, from the actual Psi Orders, is the Upeo Wamacho. These are the teleporters. They can take ships into deep space. They can teleport themselves all around. And that is their big thing. Teleporting, moving stuff. Now, there are two groups that aren't Psy Orders. They do not have the ability to make other Scions, but Scions do have a tendency to join these. One of these are the Freelance Scions, and that's just what they sound like. They're not an actual organization of Scions. They just are a group of scions who aren't affiliated and do psychic stuff for pay. And then there's a name that's a good old friend. It is no longer the Aeon Society. It is the Aeon Trinity. But this is the same organization created by good old Maximilian Mercer. Just a little over 200 years in the future. 200 years of evolution to it. And it's entirely possible that they might have been the ones pulling the strings to get the other psychic or scion orders to form. No proof on that, but it wouldn't surprise me at all if they were the ones behind that. But that is it for this week. Next week, I'm going to talk about the story path system and how it applies to Trinity Core and to Trinity Continuum Aeon. Until then, I would like you all to remember to have fun and keep gaming.